Hello there, MSL here and welcome to day 7 of our crash course series designed specifically for those who are sitting the financial reporting exam in May 2021. Today's session will focus entirely on ratios, interpretation and report writing and the focus of this particular session will be taking a past exam question from the May 2020 financial reporting exam. It was question 4 and we'll go through this from beginning to end. Why I'm particularly excited about this particular session is that this question is 100% guaranteed to be on your paper this May. You will have a question on ratios and interpretation and some form of report writing. So as long as you master your skill and it's very easy to master, you know that you have some marks in the bag even before you enter the exam hall. I'll give you a technique. I'll give you some tips and tricks on how to easily score the score on this question how to ace this particular question and ensure that you're on your way to success i dare say that this is one question that you can easily score at a minimum 14 15 16 and in some cases even 18 and on a very good day 20 out of 20 marks in this particular question so pay close attention and let's do justice to this very easy but sure to appear on your paper area or question so when it comes to ratios and interpretation, there are some students who take one approach, which is they memorize the, the different formulae for the ratios. So they know that, uh, let's say, gross profit margin will be gross profit over sales times what, 100%. After memorizing the ratios and computing the ratios on the exam, they do not write the report and they do not score the full marks and they fill the question. And that should not be your story. There's another category of students who will compute the ratios all right. They will write a report, but they do not write the report in the appropriate format and they end up losing marks. If you check the marking scheme, the examiner says clearly that he gives you marks for writing a report in the prescribed format. And I'll show you what that prescribed format is. This question, anyone here should easily score 17, 18, 19 and 20 out of 20. Let me give you some really interesting scenario. Let's say on a very bad day for you, you didn't have a good day on the exam. Let's say you scored 15 out of 20 in this question on ratios, right? After scoring 15, how many marks do you need to secure to score 50? Let me show you how easy it is to blow up this FR paper, how easy it is to decimate this paper and pass it easily, right? After scoring 15 out of 20 in the ratios question, which is very achievable, it is so easy to do, right? So after scoring 15 out of 20, how many marks do you need to score? You all agree with me that what you need a minimum of what? 35 marks to guarantee that you have passed. So with your 35 marks remaining, how do we distribute this? Let's say on a very bad day, consolidations, you score 10 out of 20, which is bad, don't forget. On the publish accounts question, you score 10 out of 20. On the question on, um, what's it called? The financial reporting standards, right? You score 10 out of 20. And then the final question that appears, usually question five on ethics and some other IFRSs, you score, let's say you score five out of 20, right? You have made your pass mark easily. Or let's even say, I mean, five is so terrible. Let's even change your five to, let's say, six. This is now a candidate who has scored, what, 36 marks. And when you add this to this, you've easily scored, what, 51. And that is above the 50% pass mark. The point I'm making here is it is so easy to pass FR. And the trick, I kept reiterating from day one that have a good technique in IFR, right? That will guarantee you will pass for sure because... Like we established at the beginning, at least 70% of the paper will be on what? IFRS. This is the question that is not on IFRS. It has really very little, if anything, to do with IFRS. So please, for this question, whether you are good with the IFRS or not, this is your chance to score very good. And I will show you how to score very highly on this particular question. So the point I'm making is ensure that ratios is the question where if you can, please even score 20-20. Because once you score 20 out of 20 on this question, your job is easy. All you need to do is what score 30 marks more and you are gone. 
you've passed ever so please make sure you master this topic learn it so well and at the end i'll give you some tricks on what areas to focus on and to ensure that you are even before they say start work you know that you have at least 15 marks in the bag so before we commence i want us to do something today let's try something else let's try and find out where all of us are watching from so please go into the live chat and type where you're watching from so if you are watching from um where from kumase you just type kumase if you're watching from tema just type tema right so please just type where you're watching from and um let's take it from there let's try and see the audience we have let's see the network we are building right let's see who is here with us just go into the live chat and type where you're watching from i am speaking from accra right now right so please go into live chat and type where you are joining us from okay so let's begin um, this particular question so let's read the question like i always say when it comes to international um, or financial reporting papers the approach is simple read the preamble to the question and then you jump straight to the requirements to see what the examiner wants you to do so here what do we have they're saying a dental limited assembles telecommunication equipment okay and sells to wholesalers and retailers the following ratios relate to the average figures for a dentist industry for the year ended 31st December 2018. In financial reporting, anytime you see a year end, take note of that year end. You don't know what it will mean for you in the question. The year ends are so crucial, they are so important, they are so fundamental, right? So we know the year end. Then what do they do? They have given us average figures for the industry in which are ties. So all these figures here are figures that have been computed based on industry figures or based on the competitors of Adenta Limited. So these figures are industry-wide, right? So what does the question want us to do? Let's go straight to the requirement. You can see they've given us some um, statements of profit or loss. We have the statement of changes in equity. And obviously, we have what the statement of financial position. What is the requirement? Required says what? Calculate the ratios for a dental limited equivalent to the industrial averages. I have lost count of the number of times this particular requirement exactly as is where that he has appeared. They give you industrial averages and ask you to use the company's given financial information to compute the same ratios as provided by the industrial averages. And this is for 10 marks. Ladies and gentlemen, nobody should score even 9 out of 10 here. Because the point I'm making is, you know a question like this will come. Prepare so well for it. And I'll show you a quick way to memorize the ratios, right? If you are struggling with that. You know you have something like this. Please ensure that even this 10 marks, you're not even going to get, you're not settling for 8 or 9. You are scoring the full 10 marks because you can. This is one question where you don't need to know any double entry. Just know what the formula is. Just know which figures to pick into the formula and you are gone. Right? So in the first requirement for 10 marks, no extra work done. Just pick the ratio, write down the formula for the ratio, slot in the figures from the question and compute the ratio and you get 10 marks. That is all. The B part is saying that as the financial controller of Adenta Limited, write a report. And please, this is where you need to actually write a report. It must be a report. Don't just begin to write what you think the analysis is add it in a report format and you score the full marks right so write a report to the board of directors analyzing what the financial performance of a dental limited based on a comparison with the industry averages so they are saying that look at the industry figures you provided to you and try to tell us how is this company performing and if you can do this you get 10 marks and please take note here those there are some students who write things like gross profits margin has increased um interest coverage ratio has decreased yes we know it has increased yes we know it has decreased what does it mean right you writing it as increased as decreased will not score you any marks you need to analyze the performance and take note here there is no right or wrong answer just make it make sense apply a lot of common sense right as long as your reasoning or your explanation makes sense the examiner will give you the marks you so much deserve. 
if you're able to put together a good report you can score 10 marks so ladies and gentlemen this 20 marks here is a gift from the examiner to you just that many students don't see it ratios is a question tell yourself i will score 20 out of 20 in this question i will score 20 over 20 in this particular question right in questions like this it appears in different formats in some questions which is kind of like the majority they give you like i said industry averages like we have here so i've seen and it comes in different forms right so for example the examiner can give you um industry averages over two years so 2018 2019 and ask you to compute ratios for both years here you can see they gave us industry averages for just one year so our work is easier whatever way the examiner presents it the, the answer or the required response is the same know the formula for the ratio and apply it right in some cases the examiner will give you financial information for two years and if you are given information for two years then you need to begin to think about something called averages and i'll show you when we start to solve the question shortly but if you have single year information like we do here then you don't have to bother too much about averages so here you can see that they said a dentist financial statements for the year ended 31st December 2018, I said out below. So we have the statement of profit or loss, the PL. They gave us the statement of changes in equity for the same period, December 2018. And then they gave us the statement of financial position for the same period. All right. So what are the ratios that we have industry information for? And which ones are we required to compute? So as you can see here, we have the return on capital employed, which I like to call the ROS. Or the ROCE. So we have a rose of 20.10% for the industry. Then they gave us a gross profit margin of 32%. The net profit before tax margin of 12.5%. We have the current ratio of 1.6 is to 1. We have the asset test ratio of 0 0.9 is to 1. We have the inventory turnover period or the inventory turnover days of 46 days. We have the trade receivable collection period or the debt test collection period or the receivable turnover days of 45 days. We have the debt to equity ratio of 40%. We have the dividend yield of 6% and the dividend cover of three times. So your job is to compute exactly these ratios just that you are going to use the information given to you in this particular question. So quick recap of the requirement is what? Calculate the ratios for a dental limited equivalent to the industrial averages for 10 marks. So what we are going to do is to list these ratios over here. Right? And based on the formula we know for them, we will apply these to them. What I recommend is please everyone should pick their textbook. Or whatever material you use to prepare for FR, whether it's your class note, whoever teaches you FR, make sure you know all the ratios. Because like I said, you do not want to give to the examiner these marks. No. It's enough to learn IFRS. It's enough to learn how to prepare consolidations. Those ones are technical. This is an easy area. Learn a formula, apply it in a question, and you're good to go. Right? So please, what I recommend is know the relationship or the formula for every ratio. I'll give you a trick today right now right on how to remember some of these ratios but please ensure that before the exam day before the, the invigilator shouts start work make sure you know every single ratios formula because that is free marks you are throwing away if you don't learn the ratios right you can't afford to get them wrong so here let's do the first one so we're solving the a part i need some extra space good so what are you required to find? They said we should find the return on capital employed. Now here, let me give you a trick to remember this. What is the name of the um, ratio? It's return on capital employed. I have a funny way of trying to remember things, right? So, and it works for me. So. If the ratio is called return on capital employed, don't you agree with me that I can pick return 
and put it on top of capital employed and I have the ratio, right? So this is capital employed. Haven't I put return on top of it? Yes, I have, right? So return on capital employed. This is the formula for return on capital employed. But you cannot use this. It's not possible because you need to define what return is. You need to define what capital employed is. There are two variants. There are two forms of this ratio. So it depends on what your return is. That's what will determine your capital employed. There are two forms of this, like I said. The first type could be what? It's either you use the return being your PBIT or what some people call EBIT. That is what your profit before interest and tax or your profit before tax. I mean, before profit before interest and tax or your earnings. Sorry, earnings before interest and tax. So either profit or earnings is the same thing, right? So let's choose one. Take note, it could either be what? So let's use the term earnings before interest and tax. You can also use what profit before interest and tax. If you choose that, then the question you ask yourself is, what is the earnings figure that will correlate or that will correspond to what capital employed? Here, earnings before interest and tax is the earnings available to all your capital providers. So your denominator will be what? Your long-term liabilities plus your equity. Because earnings before interest and tax is the earnings that is available to what? Everybody. Because you've not paid interest to your long-term debt holders. You've not paid your dividends to your shareholders. So earnings before interest and tax will be what? Divided by long-term liabilities plus equity. If you choose the second one, which is to use earnings after tax or profit after tax, any of them you want to use, then in that case, you'd have already paid the long-term debt holders their interest. So the denominator will be what? Your equity only. Because at that point, only thing left to pay is dividend. So under return on capital employed, the examiner has here has not told you which one to use. So please feel free to use any. They cannot mark you down. But be clear that if you choose earnings before interest and tax, your denominator must be long-term liabilities plus equity. If you choose earnings after tax or profit after tax, then your denominator should be what? Equity without including your long-term liability. So here, I'm going to choose the first one. And we'll use that to solve um, this particular question. Right? So like I said, return on capital employed means pick return and put capital employed on top of it. We've done that. So what? is our return going to be we have defined that to be our earnings before interest and tax divided by what our long-term liability plus equity so ladies and gentlemen just go into the question look for your earnings before interest and tax come and drop it here right so let's go to the income statement right here can you see this can you see profits before taxation right here what's the figure 3720, right? But that is profit before taxation. What do I want? Profit before what? Interest and taxes. Do you get it? We want profit before interest and taxes. So don't be deceived. Don't jump into picking profit before tax. That is a profit before tax, but after paying interest. So let's go one step up. Can you see operating profits here? So let's ignore this guy. Can you see operating profit here of 4220? You can see that is a profit you have before paying your finance cost of what? 500. So that's essentially your profit before interest and tax. Be careful, right? So it means your earnings before interest and tax will be what? 4220 divided by what? Let's go and pick long term liability and let's add equity. Where can you find long term liability? Where can you find equity? Where? The balance sheet or the statement of financial position. So let's go to the next page. If you look at the balance sheet here, you can see here, non-current liabilities will be your long-term liability. You can see we have only one figure, which is what? 8% debenture of 6,000, right? So I put here 6,000 for my long-term liability plus what is my equity going to be? Clearly, you can see here we have equity including stated capital and retained earnings, and the total is what, 6,700. 
so I add plus 6,700. So in total, it becomes 4,220 divided by what? This will give me 12,700. Obviously, return will give you something in percentage. So let's do this times 100%, right? So times 100. So this times 100, what will it give us? Let me grab my calculator. Give me a second. Um, so 4,220 divided by 12,700 times 100. This will give me 33.23%. So I got 33.23% as my return on capital employed. So I've done my first ratio. I got 33.23%. See how easy it was. And it was easy because I understood the ratio. I knew what the formula was and I knew where to pick the figure from. So please take note. Return on capital employed is one of the commonest ones. I think it's almost always in every ratio question they find a way to ask you to compute roce so this is how to compute the roce take note we need to what incorporate this into our report so let me just highlight this so when we start um, writing the report we know how to go about this right okay um all right let's keep going the next thing we are required to compute based on the information given is what gross profit margin right gross profit margin now when it comes to the margin ratios ladies and gentlemen the trick is that anytime you see anything margin it is that item divided by sales times 100 or that item divided by revenue times 100 percent. what do i mean let's give some examples so let's say you want to find msl margin right so if they ask you to find msl margin I said anything margin is all divided by sales or revenue, right? So this would be MSL divided by revenue or sales, any one you want to use, times 100. If they ask you to find coffee margin, coffee margin will be coffee divided by revenue or sales times 100. The point I'm making is whatever comes before the word margin, just pick that thing divided by sales and multiply by 100. It never fails. It is the only, it is one of the constant things in what ratios. So please, this is another trick for those who want to memorize the margin ratios. And margins are also common. They appear a lot. I think in every question, it's all is there, right? This is one less task for you or one less thing to uh, memorize because you know that everything margin will be divided by sales. So if they are asking for gross profit margin, once I say that, well, if you want gross profit margin, what did I say? So let's write gross profit margin. I said you pick that thing divided by sales, right? So it's going to be gross profit divided by sales times what? 100. So in this question, what's the gross profit? It's given to you in the PL, right? So let's clean this. Can you see here gross profit of what? 11,100. Right, so if that is the case, I just pick my 11,100 divided by sales. What will I find sales in the PL? So I come here, first line is what? Sales of what? 48,500. So divide by 48,500 and multiply by 100. And another free mark secured in the bag. Don't let these free marks go, ladies and gentlemen. So give me a second 11,100 divided by 48,500 times 100 will give me 22.89 percent and this is my gross profit margin 22.89 percent very easy to compute and i've done two already i'm on my way to get in the full 10 marks and i will not even let one mark go ladies and gentlemen the next thing they want us to do is net profit before tax margin you can see from here Net profit before tax margin. We told them that, yo, once it's margin, I can compute it. Because it's going to be that thing divided by sales times what? Times 100. So, I come here and I compute my net profit before tax margin. What would that give me? It's simply going to be what? My net profit Please write the full thing in the exam. I'm feeling lazy already. <laughs> Net profit before tax 
divided by what sales because i said every margin is divided by sales times what 100 so let's come to the question and let's pick our net profit so let's look here carefully net profit technically right is essentially your profit after what deducting your expenses but here they were specific they said net profits before tax so it's essentially your pbt figure or your profit before tax figure and it is clearly in the income statement where right here profit before taxation of what 3720 if we know this then we just come and put that figure here 3720 divided by what what is my sales figure right here first line sales of what 48500 so 48 500 times 100 what does this give me let me grab my calculator 3720 divided by 48500 that gives me 7.67 percent so 7.67 percent is my net profit before tax margin i have done three a lot more to go let's keep going let's keep going the next is what current ratio current ratio now the what we just did the first three are what people can call profitability ratios right if you don't know the terms don't worry right but please i expect you to know them before exam those ones are known as profitability ratios now we've come to current ratio which will fall under something called liquidity ratios right liquidity ratios are ratios that tend to measure how a company will be able to meet its liabilities as and when they fall due using what their assets or their current assets to be more specific so current ratio as the name implies don't be scared if they say current ratio it means it's the ratio of things that are what are current ask yourself in the whole financial reporting syllabus that you study what are the things that are current what are they current assets and what current liabilities so if they say current ratio just say okay in your mind anytime i see current ratio is the ratio of the things that are current which is what current assets and current liabilities so ladies and gentlemen current ratio simply equals current assets divided by current liabilities that's all so iv let me change the pen that's the fourth one, right? They said I should compute current ratio. So I told them no sweat. Current ratio is just a ratio of all things that are current. So this gives me my current assets divided by my current liabilities. Whatever you get, the answer you make it is to one, right? So we put the ratio on the on the basis of is to one. So let's go to the balance sheet. Let's pick our current assets divided by current liabilities and we are gone. So come to the balance sheet here. Let me clean these ones. I don't need them. Okay. So let's all look here. This is the current asset section of the balance sheet. This is the total what 11,900. Agreed? So I come here, current assets 11,900. Agreed? Let's find the current liabilities. Here, easy work. Current liabilities is right here. What's the total? 10,000. Everything has been given to you. So just pick that 10,000 and drop it here. Divided by 10,000. Whatever you get, remember I said what? It's to 1. This is not a percentage. It's a ratio, right? So whatever I get is to 1. So let me divide. That's my calculator. 11,900 divided by what? 10,000. What would that give me? 1.19. So this gives me 1.19 is to what is to one and this is another mark i've secured in the bag easy easy work right easy work okay let's keep going let me see how many ratios are you computing let's be sure um one two three four five six seven eight nine ten good ten ratios it means what every ratio you compute one mark where can you find it so easy to grab marks like that so far i've, I've picked up four marks ladies and gentlemen by doing just four ratios, I've picked up four marks. By the time we are done, we have 10 marks. Please and please again, like tell yourself, be so convinced in your mind that you are going to blow that ratios question. So that by the time you are done, your work is even done. You're almost 
at passing FR. So by the time you go and attempt console and publish the account and the standards question, you are even gone, right? And remember I told you the trick is what? Answer our question. So you are telling yourself that this FR, you will pass at all costs, right? You can't pass, you will pass, you must pass. Okay, so our next ratio is what? They said acid test ratio. Acid test ratio. I'm sure you'll be asking A. Hey, which one is acid test ratio? No worries, no stress. I'll show you shortly. So let's find the acid test ratio. Now, when it comes to it's, a, it's another liquidity ratio, by the way. You see, the whole idea for ratios or liquidity ratios. Let me give you a quick recap of liquidity ratios. We are trying to see how quickly a company can use its current assets to meet its current liabilities as and when they fall due. You might be aware, or you must be aware from your financial reporting studies when it comes to preparation of published accounts, that the current asset section of the statements of financial position is recorded or is reported in order of increasing liquidity. What do I mean? So you start with your inventory, you list your receivables, you list your bank balance and you list your cash or your cash and cash equivalent, if any. That is a very simplified version. You could have what prepayments in there. You could have current tax assets. You could have non-current assets held for sale, reclassified from IFRS 5. But let's not bother with those things. Let's stick with the fundamentals. Inventory, receivables, bank, and cash. So there are some levels of liquidity ratios. So at level 1, you have what your current ratio. So our clean decks, take note of this. I'll clean it very soon. Your current ratio is your current assets divided by your current liabilities. That's the, the first step. Then someone may say that, well, you may have a very high current ratio. Let's say you have with a ratio of 2 is to 1. So this is impressive. But we are saying that maybe this company has a lot of inventory. And inventory may be slow moving, may be obsolete, may be difficult to sell. So if a company has a very high inventory balance, we are saying that let us subject this company to the acid test. Let us put them through acid. Let us put them through fire. Let us see. If when we take away their inventory figure, they can still meet their current liabilities as and when they fall due. So, what some people call, it's also called a quick ratio. Take note, it's either acid test or quick ratio. Quick as in Q-U-I-C-K, right? So, the quick ratio or the acid test ratio will be your current assets after taking away your inventory divided by your current liabilities so remember i said that we are trying to see if i subject this company to a test that passes them through acid find a way to remember things find a weird um, explanation to help you remember right if i subject them to acid such that now they don't even have their inventory to support them again can they still pay their current liabilities so it's current assets strip away your inventory and see if you can use that to meet your current liabilities that is the acid test ratio or the quick ratio so this is this is step one level two then level three we can have something called the cash ratio here we are saying that you know we want to see what cash figure do you have today that you can use to meet your liabilities it's not about your inventory it's not about your other assets right so here it will be your cash and cash equivalents divided by your current liabilities cash and cash equivalents divided by current liabilities and we did um, cash flows cash flow statements in our just ended session before today so remember the term cash and cash equivalents as defined under is 7 statements of cash flow. but the point i'm making here is that under liquidity ratios really at a very high level the ones that relate to current items in the statements of financial position will be either the current ratio the quick ratio or the asset test ratio and the cash ratio so here the examiner chose to test you on the acid test ratio and i mentioned that take note in another setting they could say what quick ratio instead of acid test ratio quick ratio so take note it could be either quick ratio or the acid test ratio and i've told you that this will essentially be your what current assets minus inventory divided by current liabilities is to one 
right? So what will our current assets be? No stress. It's given to us in the question anyways. So let's go to the balance sheet. Let me clean everything I have here so far. So what's my current assets? Watch here. Current assets figure is what? 11,900. Agreed? So I come here and I put 11,900. Minus what's my inventory figure? Once again, you can find that on the balance sheet. So I have what inventory of five thousand five hundred. So this is inventory. So minus five thousand five hundred divided by current liability, which is right here. Current liability is what total is ten thousand. So I put here ten thousand, and all of this will be is to one. So calculator. 11,900 minus 5,500, right? So that'll give me 6,400. So that gives me 6,400 divided by 10,000 is to 1. And this will clearly give me what? 0 0.64. So let me just do this. This will give me 0 0.64 is to 1, right? 0 0.64 is to 1. So this is my acid test ratio. I have done how many so far? 5. So I have 5 marks in the bag. Let's keep going because we are going to score all the 10 marks that are up for grabs here. So let's do the sixth one, which is what? Inventory turnover period. Inventory turnover period. Some examiners may ask you to compute the inventory turnover days or the average stock holding period. It's the same thing, right? The same thing. Now, when it comes to the inventory turnover period, there is a way to remember the inventory turnover period. And let me show you. Um, when it comes to this, there are two variants. They could either ask you to compute the inventory turnover ratio, which is not in days, but is in terms of what a number of times is a turnover ratio, or what some people call an activity ratio or a turnover ratio, right? So there's a way to remember this, yeah? How would I remember this if I were you? Let's even forget about the period ratio. So let's start with what the raw inventory turnover. How will I compute this? It's called inventory turnover. So all I do. I will turn over inventory by putting inventory in the denominator. So inventory turnover, I turn over everything and I put inventory in the denominator. So here, I put here inventory. Then the question I ask myself is, well, what in the income statement will lead to what inventory? And essentially is what is the cost of sales figure. Or what you can say is, where in the income statement can I find the most inventory um, values, which is what the cost of sales figure because it has both opening inventory and closing inventory. This figure or this ratio will give you the inventory turnover in a number of times. If you want to find the inventory turnover in a number of days, then just flip them to flip them over or turn them over again and multiply by 365 days. So if I want to find the inventory turnover in days or in periods then i'm going to put the denominator to the top and i put the numerator to the bottom i turn it over because the turnover ratio right so i put inventory over cost of sales times 365 days and you are good to go but ladies and gentlemen hold on for a second there are some questions that will give you two years worth of financial information that is last year and this year if they give you that, please use average inventory instead, not the current year figure. Find the average. Average is what? Year 1 plus year 2 divided by 2. That's all. Add the 2 years divided by 2. Here, because we're given just one year balance sheet, we'll just use the current year. But please, if you're given two years, for the turnover ratios in particular, please use the average and not just the current year, right? So here, the formula we'll use will end up being what? this particular one here right if you've memorized it it's fine fair game use it but i have a, a single one in my mind i used to get the two 
So if they ask me to compute inventory turnover, I know that I turn over inventory. So it becomes cost of sales divided by inventory. That gives me a number of times. If they want it in days, I'll just swatch, switch them around. I bring the inventory on top, take cost of sales to the denominator and multiply by 365 days. Also take note finally, now some question will tell you that you need to assume that the number of days in the year is 60 days or it's 80 days or it's 90 days. Whatever they ask you to assume, please multiply by that. Don't go and say that you know that every year is 365 days, so you are going to use 365 days at all costs. No. Follow the instructions given in the exam. Some will say assume a 360-day year or a 200-day year. Please use what the examiner asks you to do. Here, they've not mentioned, so we'll use 365. So, back to the question. We've been asked to compute what? Inventory turnover period. So, what do I do? I say, all right, dear examiner, this will be what? My inventory. I already know that's what I'm doing this, right? So, inventory divided by my cost of sales times 365 days. So, where will I find inventory balance sheet? So, go to the statement of financial position. And let me clean everything again so it's easy to pick up. So you can see my inventory figure is right here again. Inventory is what? 5,500. How we see? So I pick 5,500. Divided by cost of sales. So all I find that income statement. So I come to the income statement. Clean all of these guys. What is my cost of sales right here? Cost of sales is what? 37,400. So I put here... 37,400 times 365 days. Another easy mark in the bag. So let's compute this. So it gives me 5,500 divided by 37,400 times 365. It gives me 53. So I got 53.68. So what this means essentially is that what it will take me 53 or roughly 54 days to fully sell all my inventory right it takes me this period of time to fully sell all my inventory okay let's keep going the next ratio is what trade receivable collection period trade receivable collection period okay so that's v i oops VII trade receivable collection period. Once again, here this is what the um, debtors turnover period or the receivables turnover days. It could have different names used by different examiners, but here they said it's called the trade receivable collection period. Take note that there's a matter. Um, ratio known as what receivables turnover or debtors turnover ratio that will be once again similar to the inventory one you turn over your receivables so it will be receivables in the denominator what do i mean so you'd have had what you have receivables in the denominator they ask yourself what will lead to receivables it is what credit sales so credit sales will be at the top credit sales so this will give you in a number of times if you want it in days the receivables goes to the top, sales comes to the bottom, so it becomes receivables over credit sales times 365 days. This is just my personal way of remembering, but you can find, if you have memorized it in your brain already, it's fine. Just use what you know, right? Once again, if you are given two balance sheets, please remember to use average receivables and not just the current year figure. Yeah? Okay. And then the actual field or the actual component of the ratio is credit sales. If the question doesn't give you credit sales and they give you just sales, use what they give you, which is the total sales figure. But some examiners will tell you that out of the sales figure of, let's say, whatever the figure is, this portion is on cash or this portion is on credit. So please remember to, if you have that information, to use what the credit sales portion to um, compute this. So let's let's come back here quickly let's finish up we're going to compute the trade receivables collection period 
and this is easy right i've told you it will be essentially what your trade receivables divided by what your credit sales times 365 days so let's go to the question and pick this information so what is my receivables figure i have what receivables of 6400 here you can see take note we have just one year it's not two years so we don't find the average we can't even find it so we just pick the current year figure which is 6400 divided by credit sales what is my credit sales figure I don't have it anyways it's just sales that i was given so i just picked the sales figure here and 48 500 please if you have credit sales use the credit sales so i put i divide by 48 500 all of this times 365 days so what does this give me calculator 6 400 divided by 48 500 times 365 and this gives me 48.16 days what it means is that it takes me 46.16 days for all those who owe me to pay me back right that's how long it takes you to collect debts or those who owe the business or your receivables the next we've been asked to compute is the debt to equity ratio debt to equity ratio and this ratio there are two variants once again let me show you what i mean by this so this is v i i i debt to equity ratio so here you have two options it's either you do debt over equity and by that i mean long-term debt right so either you do long-term debt over equity or you do long-term debt over long-term debt plus equity so it's either um debt to equity or long-term debt to equity or long-term debt over long-term debt plus equity but what i recommend you use is what this first one here which is what your long-term debt divided by your equity that's a recommended that's what i recommend to you right so let's use this so i've said this will equal what your long-term debt divided by what your shareholders equity and it's a ratio so you end up having what times 100 because it's supposed to be in percentage so what is our long-term debt in this question easy let's go to the balance sheet you can see we have just one on current liability that's the eight percent debenture of what six thousand so that'll be my long-term debt so six thousand divided by equity by equity what we mean is that we want what your total shareholders equity so here six thousand seven hundred so divided by six seven hundred times what 100 percent what does it give me let me find calculator six seven hundred oops sorry six thousand divided by six seven zero zero gives me eighty nine point five five percent and this is my debt to equity ratio eighty nine point five five percent okay we're almost done with the 10 marks our next is to compute what dividend yield right dividend yield so for your dividend yield what must you know right a quick trick is that when it comes to the ratios that are based on yield just remember that your denominator will be what price or market price of the company's shares so Anytime you see a ratio that's a yield ratio, if it's a yield ratio, make sure the denominator will be what? Divided by market price of the shares or the uh, market price per share or the share price of the company's um, shares, right? Okay. 
And since it is dividend you're talking about, then the denominator automatically be what? Dividend per share. You try to compare apples and apples and not apples with oranges. So our dividend yield will simply be what? Our dividend per share over the market price per share, right? Times 100. It's in the percentage, as you can see, they gave us. So that's what we'll do. Dividend per share divided by what? Market price per share. Let's find the dividend per share. How do we find it? It's called dividend per share. So we need to work for the dividend per share. This is simply be what? The company's dividend paid or declared, right? Divided by what? Number of equity shares outstanding please equity shares if the, if the question gives you preference shares it doesn't count because your dividend yield is essentially um, a proportion of your equity shares not necessarily your preference shares because those are um, preferred equity instruments right okay so what's the dividend paid let's go and find it in a question where would you find it Right here in the statement of changes in equity, right here, we have dividends of what 1800. So, dividend paid or declared is 1800 divided by what is the number of shares this company has? Not the price, not the value of equity, but the number. Let's go to the balance sheet. Can you see here? Let me clean these guys first. We have equity and equity. What do we have? Stated capital. Of how much? 3,000. But this is 3,000. In fact, it's 3 million Ghana cities, right? What we want is the quantity, the number of shares, not the value, the number. You can see here they are saying that what? Ordinary shares issued at what? 25 pesos per share. Now, how do you find or how do you derive the number of shares if you are given the per share um, value or the issue price of each share all you do is to pick the value of the shares here and divide it by the price given here always remember is a balance sheet one here divided by this one right this divided by this right so all i will do is i'll come here and i'll say okay number of equity shares outstanding will simply be what this three thousand here so 3,000 divided by what? 0 0.25. So that gives me what? 1,800 for my dividend. The number of equity shares I'll stand with what? 3,000 over 0 0.25. So give me a second. 3,000 divided by 0 0.25 gives me 12,000. So it means my dividend, which we found to be 1,008 is fine. But my number of equity shares outstanding is 12,000 shares or technically 12 million shares since the question is in what? It's in thousands. So let me divide 1,800 divided by 12,000 will give me what? It gives me um, 0 0.15, right? So this 0. Point, let me change my pen. This 0 0.15, ladies and gentlemen, is which figure is my dividend per share figure remember all i'm finding here is what dividend per share right so my dividend per share is 0 0.15 now if i have this 0 0.15 i have to come and slot it into this dividend yield formula here which is saying that what dividend yield is what dividend per share divided by market price per share so i've now found the dividend per share so i come and slot it here my dividend yield will then be my dividend per share over my market price per share dividend per share i just found here to be what 0 0.15 divided by the market price per share given to the given to you in the question right here what they said note the market price of our dentist shares throughout the year average six cds each so I just Divide by what? 6 and multiply by 100. 
so this gives me 0 0.15 divided by 6 and that gives me times 100 is what 2.5 percent so this company's dividend yield is 2.5 percent and you are good to go you have secured i think nine marks so far one more to go obviously in the exam will take you a shorter time to do this because you guys are ge very like genius students very smart you should know your stuff so shouldn't be a problem for you let's find the last one which is the dividend cover and then we'll go on to look at how to write the report so let's just look at the dividend cover that will be our final dividend cover now dividend cover is essentially what a ratio that tries to see how many times you can use profits to cover any dividend amounts payable yeah so to memorize this um, ratio or this formula what i do or what i used to help me remember as a memory aid or a memory jog is the formula i say is dividend cover right so why don't i cover dividend what do i mean by this I pick dividend and I cover it with something. I put something on top of it. That's what I used to remember. So dividend cover. And what can you use to cover dividend? What do we pay dividend out of? Is it not profit after tax? Right? Is there profit after tax? So profit after tax divided by dividend in the unit is times, the number of times. That will give you dividend cover. So let's go to the question. What is my profit after tax? Here it is what profit after tax is what 1920. So I bring here 1920 divided by dividend, which I picked from here to be 1800, right? So divided by 1800 in a number of times. So let me compute this 1920 divided by 1800 will give me what 1.067 times and this is my dividend cover and that is all ladies and gentlemen we are done with the ratios we have been able to successfully compute all ratios if you can do this 10 marks in the bag for you guaranteed hands down assured no two ways about it it's yours to go but please ensure that you don't get this wrong. Like, how can you get it wrong? All the information you need to do this is given to you in the question. I understand that sometimes the examiner will try to play smart and give you figures you need to work for or derive. But please look at multiple past exam questions. See or, in fact, see, do this, yeah? Do this. Take the past three years, minimum, right? If you can do more, all the, all the better. Just focus on all the ratio questions that have come. You will see a trend. You, for yourself, do it for yourself. Take the past three sittings. If you can do more sittings, better. Look at the trend and see what has come, what the examiner has asked. If you can do five years at the minimum, ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing that will beat you on the exam because you see all the different possibilities, all the different ways the examiner could test you on this and you'll be on your way to passing the exam. So please, let's take the past five sittings and take a look at how this question has been tested. So now let's jump straight into how to write a report or how do you put together the report to score the 10 marks you've been given here. Remember the requirement here? We are required to compute what? So let's clear things up. We are required to calculate the ratios for identity limited equivalent to the industrial averages for 10 marks. And then now, as the financial controller, write a report to the board of directors analyzing the financial performance based on a comparison with the industry averages 10 marks so let me show you how to write a report a report that will score you 10 marks easy now it is a report so please give it an appropriate title let's call it report to board of directors of Adenta Limited. And as you can see, nothing new here. 
I'm literally picking information from the question and dropping it here, right? So you've written the heading. Every report is addressed to somebody and it's from somebody. So who is it to? And who is it from? The question once again gave you the clue. They said what? Let me show you. Let me clean up. They said as the financial controller. So that is what is that's who is from. It is from the financial controller. Write a report to who? The board of directors. So to who? Let's write to the board of directors. So to from what is the date? Please use the date of your exam. The date you are writing your exam. Personally, let me use today's date. Which is what? I think it's 27th April, is it? 27th April. 2021 and then the last thing you need to talk about is what the subject the subject for the subject don't think too much the question gave you the answer they said what write a report to the board doing what analyzing the financial performance of a dental limited based on a comparison with industrial wages i'll repeat the same thing here right so just write analysis of the financial performance of Adenta Limited based on a comparison with the industry averages and you can just add in a little twist for the year ended right so for the year ended 31st december 2018 and you are done so two from date subject the examiner awards marks for this in case you didn't know right in some years i've seen two marks for the structure of the report sometimes three marks but please know that out of the 10 marks for the report you'll get a minimum of two marks going for structure so it means we are not joking with our structure we will not let any mark slip from or slip through our hands or slip through our fingers so we are getting every single mark on the exam so we have our structure let's start the report every report has a structure has an introduction it has a body and it has a conclusion and you must feature all three parts so let's start with a clear introduction introduction and here this is your chance to express your creative freedom let your creative juices flow so here feel free there's no this is your chance to actually feel that show the examiner the english you can speak right so here i'll say in this report and try to sway away stay away from um, the first person so don't say i have right or in this report i will just try to speak from what a third person or whatever in this report and and please pardon the handwriting i don't feel like writing nice today <laughs> okay so in this report an analysis of the financial performance of Adenta Limited has been provided vis-a-vis -vis the performance of the, which industry is this even? Telecommunication, okay of the telecommunication equipment industry full stop right the report will be structured along the lines of profitability 
right? And here, please take note, it's nothing strict. It's my style, right? So that's how I want to write it. But there is some way around it, right? So along the lines of profitability, liquidity, gearing, and investment investment ratios and for those who can see what i'm trying to do i am just trying to categorize the ratios they gave me here into the categories that they fall into that is all right so those who know we have a category of ratios and dividend yield dividend cover are all what investment ratios yeah debt to equity ratio is a gearing ratio the collection period ones can all be said to be what liquidity a massive tears current ratio and then return on capital employed gross profit margin and profit margin are all profitability ratios right so really um i am just trying to tell the examiner that i will use these headings within my reports to analyze the um performance so i've done introduction please always write an introduction you'll get a mark for giving an introduction you get a mark for giving conclusion the 10 marks is split equally between what the performance don't just jump and say gross profit margin has increased it has decreased no it has decreased and so what right so please introduction let's come to the body so i've already said i'll use headings of what i said here i'll use profitability liquidity gearing and investment ratios right so my first heading will be what profitability so write profitability and here please feel free to express yourself there is no right or wrong answer Right, just to make it make sense, it should be there should be some common sense in what you um what you said you were going to talk about. Yeah, so good. And uh, profitability, what comments must we make? Remember, we've computed return on capital employed, we've computed gross profit margin, and we've computed net profit margin. So let's try and be creative here. Let's comp compare what we got to what the industry got. And to make our work easy so that I don't scroll too much, allow me to write the answers I got by this here yeah? so that we don't keep... I don't want to scroll and distract everybody. So let me write them here so that I can compare. Return on capital employment, what did I get? I got 33. So that I can see everything here, 0.23%. And you can do this on exam paper so that you can easily see everything. Gross profit margin, what did I get? I got 22.89%. Net profit margin, I got 7.67%. Current ratio, I got 1.19 is to 1. Asset test ratio, I got 0 0.64 is to 1. Uh, inventory turnover days, I got 53.68 days. Trade receivable collection period, I got 46. Point, so this 46. Point, is it 46? No, 48. Okay. I got 48, which is even still higher. 0.16 days debt to equity ratio what did i get wow very high terrible 89.55 percent dividend yield i got 2.5 percent and then dividend cover i got 1.067 percent okay so now i have all my figures side by side like let's write our report in peace so let's talk about profitability. So here I'll try and lump together them. And it's not necessary to discuss every single ratio. No, you don't have the time for that. Remember I told you in the exam, this is a 20 mark question. You shouldn't spend more than 36 minutes in total. In fact, if we are to break it down into the sub-component parts, which you are supposed to do, it means the A part where you're computing the ratios, you shouldn't spend more than 18 minutes because it's what is 1.8 minutes per each mark. So 10 marks, you need to spend 18 minutes maximum. So it means you have 18 minutes to compute all the 10 ratios and by 18 minutes you should have stopped and moved on and if you ask me 18 minutes is more than enough to do this if you've practiced enough you finish even way before that so it means the report you also have 18 minutes to put it together don't spend more than this when it's time move on try to be strict 
with your timings. So here, let's talk about profitability. So we can just say, with respect to, and please here, feel free, this freestyle I'm doing, right? With respect to our dentist, profitability Adenta has a return on capital employed of 33.23% which is higher than the industry average of 20 Point one zero percent, and so what? Like, don't end here. When you end, they've not said anything, right? So we'll say this is indicative of what superior returns to Adenta investors. This could be attributable to a number, I'm beginning to write too fast, to a number of factors which may include proper management of costs or into bracket expenses right they've been able to get 33.3 percent because their return was higher higher return means they probably manage costs so we've said that this could be because they manage their costs well so let's see if this is true so we'll say that this assertion of proper cost management is confirmed is it we hold on hold on so gross profit margin is 22 no hold on hold on a second if you watch the figures yeah um gross profit margin is actually lower can you see so let's change our direction. It won't work. So you can see this is fluid, right? What will work for you is what you write. So here we have 22.89, which is lower than this. This is also lower than this. So it won't work. All right. So let's quickly change direction. It's okay to change. So let's come here. So instead of saying this could be attributed to a number of factors, which may include proper management. So let's change this, which may include. Let's not use the expense route. It won't work. Which may include what? Let's say proper, instead of expenses, they are not managing expenses well because they clearly have higher expenses. Um, so let's say which may include, let's let's even change proper to what which may include a more efficient utilization of resources to generate returns. What we are saying is that Adepa is better at using the resources it has to generate returns. Why am I saying this? Remember, return on capital employed equals what? Your return literally over capital employed, right? So if this figure is going up, it means that you are using less capital employed to generate higher returns. So that's what efficiency, right? So we can say that Adepa is what? More efficient at utilizing resources to generate what returns that's the point we are making here okay let's keep going this is evident in the fact that despite the fact that adenta has a much lower gross profit margin and net profit 
before tax margin please write the full thing i'm using abbreviations right the, despite the fact that they have a much lower one adenta still maintains superior roce numbers then let's mention it is worth mentioning that management of Adenta Limited may have to begin to take a critical look into their cost management strategies in order to increase the gross profit margins and net profits before tax margin in subsequent periods so the point i'm making here is that you can see we've been beating about the bush but what we are saying is that this is an interesting scenario with respect to our dentist profitability they have an roc of what 33.23 which is higher than the industry average of 20.1 okay this is indicative of what superior returns to their investors it means their investors will get higher returns than those investing in other companies in the same industry then you remember we started trying to go along the path of okay you know this would have worked if when i checked the gross profit margin and net profit margin if those were also higher than industry then i know that it is because they are managing costs better as a result they are getting those higher returns but i realized that no that will not work because even though their roc is higher they have what lower margin so it means that they are not managing their costs well and the only reason why their roc is higher is because they are being more efficient are generating the same amount of what return based on a similar or smaller amount of what resources or capital or input so we started saying what this could be indicative or this could be attributable to a number of factors which may include a more efficient utilization of what resources to generate returns this is evident in the fact that despite the fact that they have a much lower gross profit margin and net profit before tax margin they still maintain what a superior roc so we are saying that it is now worth mentioning that management will have to begin to take a critical look into their cost management strategies in order to increase what the margins in subsequent periods because your uh, margins are clearly much lower your industry competitor is doing 33 percent you are doing um, let me clean this they are doing 32 percent you are doing 22.89 something is wrong somewhere you are spending too much right on the net profit basis they are doing 12.5 you are doing 7.67 which is still very very um low compared to your competitor so you can see something like this for profitability nothing deep nothing serious right but you've made your comment you've made your point and there's no right or wrong answer really i'm sure if you check the examiner's report they'll talk about something else i don't know what they wrote but feel free express your creative juices here the examiner wants to see how you are reasoning right so just pick what the figures are and write a narrative and you score your marks so he has spoken about profitability let's move to the next heading so the next heading i said will be what let me see uh, profitability okay we've done this so what's what liquidity okay let's talk about liquidity next liquidity so under liquidity you know we have to look at a number of ratios here what are we comparing so let me clean some of these uh, oops let me bring this back okay so here what are we comparing we have a current ratio of what industry is 1.61 right and we got 1.19 lower than industry Asset test, industry 0 0.9, we got 0 0.6. Um, inventory turnover, inventory is 
I'm mean, industry selling their inventory for the six days. We are doing 53 days, not the, not the best. Trade receivables, they are collecting their debtors in 45. We are doing 48. So on all fronts, we are doing worse when it comes to the liquidity. How do we need to comment on this? We can't just say we are doing worse. We need to find reasons why. So we can say that with respect to Adentes liquidity, Adenta appears to be in a much worse position when it comes to meeting current liability obligations as and when they fall due right because we know they have worse ratios so we can say that on all liquidity fronts adenta has a much more unfavorable ratio as compared with the industry so now we need to find reasons right so we say with the current ratio of 1.19 is to 1 adenta is barely able to meet its current liabilities fully as and when they are due then we talk about the acid test ratio so the acid test ratio reveals an even more disturbing fact right with the exclusion of inventory adentes liquidity falls to 0 0.64 is to 1 this is a clear indication of inventory forming a significant part of Adentes current assets right so we know this let's try and buttress this point even further let's look at the inventory turnover period it takes the industry what 46 days to sell it takes adenta 53 days so we can say that this so we say this is confirmed by Adentes much higher inventory turnover period of 53.68 days as compared to the industry's 46 days. This means that Adenta potentially has slow-moving 
or obsolete inventories and may need to consider potential inventory write downs right so we are saying that the inventory is not moving fast so let's begin to think about what's writing down inventory in line with is 2 so here we mentioned that in general current ratio is bad but we realize that when we check the asset test it was even worse and this is clearly because well, they have a higher proportion of inventory and this is confirmed that inventory is not moving fast because what industry is selling their inventory faster than ours so that is what terrible you can end here I can also add a twist to the receivables. But when I check receivables, industry is doing 45 days. We are doing 48 days. So there's not much worry there. The main problem was coming from what? Receivables. So you can um, put your analysis here and then you end there. Nothing deep. Like I said, there's no right or wrong answer. Just make sure you are analyzing something and making sense. So here, under liquidity, what did I start with? I said what? Oh, that's a lot. Okay. With respect to their Adensus liquidity, they appear to be in a much worse position when it comes to meeting current liability obligations. Because remember that what liquidity ratio is all about meeting your current liability obligations as and when they fold you. So I'm saying on all liquidity fronts, Adenta has a much more unfavorable ratio as compared with what the industry. With a current ratio of 1.19 to 1, they are barely able to meet their current liabilities fully. Because don't forget that what if you have one is to one, it means you can equally match your current liability squarely. One is to one. Industry is doing 1.6 is to one. Here, we are doing 1.19. That's why I said we are barely able to, because industry is doing 1.6. So they can do one and even half plus an extra, right? So they are quite comfortable. Not the best, but at least you should be doing two is to one. But industry is doing 1.6. We are doing 1.19. So I'm saying. We are barely able to meet it as and when they fall due. And the asset test ratio reveals an even more disturbing fact. With the exclusion of inventory, when we take out inventory, our dentist liquidity now falls towards 0.64. So it means that inventory was sort of protecting us or shielding or um, buttressing us as we were above one. It was inventory. When we take out inventory, we go back to 0.6. This is a clear indication of inventory forming a significant part of our current asset, which is not bad, but this is confirmed by a dentist's much higher inventory turnover period of 53.68 days as compared to the industry's 46 days. This means that Denta potentially, please use the words like potentially, possibly, because you are all making analysis. Nobody has a right or wrong answer, right? So potentially has what? slow moving or obsolete inventory and may need to consider what potential inventory write downs i'm done i'm done i've made my second analysis i think this one went longer than it should but at least you get the vibe right something along these lines don't stress too much have your headings say what you want to say don't just say it has gone up it has gone down say what has happened compared to the industry and give why you think it has changed right report writing Feel free. This is a freestyle, right? So I've not thought about this before. Um, so maybe I would have written better if it was an exam. I may have done worse, but whatever. Let's keep going. I said we'll do profitability, liquidity. So let's move to what? Gearing. Let's move on to that. So gearing is really what? How much a business is what? Using debt in this capital structure at the very fundamental level. So for gearing, what do I need to talk about? Just one ratio, which is the debt to equity ratio. So gearing. And here you can be very creative, right? So we can say that. And let's make the report flow. Let's make it natural. We just spoke about liquidity. So let's talk about gearing. We can say that to further add to a dentist liquidity troubles. Or you can use the word they are liquidity woes, right? Liquidity troubles. Adenta has a gearing ratio of 89.55%, which is more than twice that 
of the industry at what 40 percent and that is true industry is doing gearing of 40 percent it means in their capital structure technically they are capital structure comprised of 40 percent debt you are doing 89.55 almost what 90 percent so you are over geared so we can say that a denta can be said to be over leveraged or over levered right now to make our story sweeter let's check the balance sheet and see if we can find anything interesting did you guys realize that under current assets they did not have any cash and cash equivalents can you see over here there's no cash and cash equivalents company doesn't have cash let's check their current liabilities check here they have what a bank overdraft so you you don't have money your liquidity is bad your gearing is very high and you even have an overdraft. And remember that gearing, we use the long-term ratio of what? 8% debenture. So it means that we didn't even consider the overdraft in determining gearing. This company is in serious trouble. They don't have cash. Their liquidity is terrible. They are dependent on inventory to move everything. And they even have an overdraft, right? So how do we talk about this? We say that they are overlevered. We say this is confirmed by the fact that Adenta has no cash and cash equivalents, but rather has to depend on what bank over drafts we say this is very worrying as it casts a lot of doubt on the company's ability to continue meeting its interest payment obligations under the 8% debenture. I'm saying that you're going for a loan or you have a debenture you have to pay 8% every year. You don't have cash. So could it be that a company has gone for the overdraft to be paying off their loan, which is terrible because they don't have cash. This company is cashless, right? It's very terrible. So with the extremely high gearing ratio coupled with the overdraft position and the poor liquidity stance buffered in the bracket buffered by slow moving inventory it is recommended that management takes immediate remedial actions if Adenta is to remain a going concern. So here you've mentioned that you are worried for them. You don't know how they'll continue if they are unable to and media obligations then we can mention that to to top it all there is a trade payable balance which remains unpaid 
and constitutes roughly 70% of all current liabilities into brackets due within 12 months or less. This is urgent and needs addressing as soon as possible. So here you are trying to indicate to the examiner that there's trouble, there's fire on the mountain. What do I mean? So to further add, take note, we just spoke about their liquidity, right? So to further add to a dentist liquidity troubles or their liquidity woes, they have a gain ratio of 89.55, which is more than twice that of the industry at 40%. So there's trouble. These people are borrowing too much. Why are they doing this? Let's find out. They are saying they can be said to be over leveraged, which is true. This is confirmed by the fact that Adenta has no cash and cash equivalent. Under their current assets, you can't even see one Ghana CD of cash, which is weird. A company must have some cash or at least have some money in your bank. They don't have anything but rather has to depend on what bank overdraft. So we established that they are highly levered, they've borrowed, they don't have cash of their own, and they are even relying on bank overdraft. So they've borrowed long term to finance business, and then they have actually gone for a bank overdraft. Clearly, you can see they are using the overdraft to pay off what the, the interest. This is not sustainable. The company will collapse if they continue like this, right? So I mentioned that this is very worrying as it cast a lot of doubt on the company's ability to continue meeting its interest payment obligations under the 8% debenture, right? With the extremely high gearing ratio, coupled with the overdraft position and the poor liquidity stance, which is only being buffered by what slow moving inventory, which nobody is buying. Inventory is very slow, right? It is recommended that management takes immediate remedial actions if the company is to remain a going concern, right? So you've mentioned different things in one um, paragraph. Then to top it all, there is a trade payable balance right here, this figure of 7,000 here, right? Trade payables, right? Which constitutes roughly 70% because it's 7,000 by 10,000, right? Of all kind liabilities, which are due within 12 months or less. So to add to all this trouble, they still have to pay the 7,000 within one year. Which cash would they use? Will Adenta go for another overdraft to pay this guy? Who has to go for a second overdraft to pay off the 8% debenture? Like it is trouble everywhere. That's a picture we are painting here, right? So we are saying this is urgent and needs addressing as soon as possible. So here the examiner will be able to agree with you that, oh, this guy has made some very valid points. Let me give him some marks, right? But once again, I agree that I have written longer than you expected to write on exam day. This is more than you are required to write, but I've made my point. Let's move to our final, which I think was investment ratios. Yes, investment ratios. So let's write our final heading. We've spoken about, take note, we've spoken about profitability. Um, Spoken about profitability. We spoken about liquidity. We spoken about um, gearing. Now let's talk about investment ratios. Okay. So investments ratios. Okay. So here, which ones are we required to look at? Simple. Let's come to our table here. You can see we have what? Dividend yield of 6% for the industry. We got 2.5%, right? And then dividend cover. Industry is what? Three times. We are doing what? 1.06 times. This is times, not percent. Right? We are doing 1.06 times. So this company is really bleeding. They are suffering. So 1.67 times. Okay, so here, let me start with the dividend yield. So Adenta 
has a much lower dividend yield at 2.5% as compared to the industry's 6%, right? So the industry is doing 6%. We are doing what? Um, 2.5%. How terrible is this? How bad is this? And what must we do to um, correct this? Okay. Even more worrying is the dividend cover of 1.067 times compared with the industries three times coverage. So the point I'm making here is nothing is working for us. To make matters worse, we can't even cover our dividend. It means we can pay our dividend just once and we don't have any money. The coverage, that's what it means. We are three times for the industry. It means the industry can pay their dividend three times and what? That's when they will go broke. So they can pay a dividend first time. If you want to pay a second time, they can still pay and they even have room to pay a third time. But for us, once we pay dividend once, we are gone. So let's comment on this. What our coverage ratio suggests. So let's see what our dividend. So let's add what our dividend coverage ratio suggests is that a denta may likely have to stop paying out dividends to shareholders in the interim as the underlying liquidity and gearing issues are resolved so we are saying that this company is not in a good shape to be paying dividend let's stop for some time because watch this you the profit you made was thousand nine twenty then you paid thousand eight hundred as dividend once the company collapse do you get it so we are saying that given a profit after tax of ghana cd one nine two zero 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 in millions adenta still managed to pay out dividend of ghana cd one eight zero 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 in the bracket we can say technically uh, let me find a percentage give me a second um so 1800 zero, zero, divided by 1920 divided by 1920 so technically a 93.75% dividend payout ratio right we say this is clearly unsustainable given the company's relatively poor performance compared with the industry let me say what the dividend yield is only yet another indication of the fact 
that a denta needs to resolve its financial problems as soon as is practicable right so under this we've mentioned that they have what a much lower dividend yield at 2.5 percent compared to the industry six percent right even what is more worrying is that their dividend cover is just 1.067 times compared to the industry's three times. You're saying that what our dividend coverage ratio suggests is that Adenta may likely have to stop paying our dividends because what it means is that you can only cover your dividend once with what your profit, and that's it, right? So we have to stop paying our dividends to shareholders in the interim as the underlying liquidity and gearing issues are resolved. Given a profit after tax of 1.92 million. Adenta still managed to pay out 1.8 million. They are killing the company, right? So this is technically what a 93.75% dividend payout ratio. You made 1.9, you paid 1.8 as dividend. When you don't have what your liquidity is terrible, your gearing is terrible, you borrowed. Why don't you retain the cash to grow the business, right? So that's the point I'm making here. This is clearly unsustainable given the company's relatively poor performance compared with what the industry. The dividend yield is only yet another indication of the fact that Adenta needs to what, resolve its financial problems as soon as it's practicable, right? So we've made these points. Then let's conclude, right? You've, you've spoken about your headings, so let's talk about conclusion. Conclusion. So here, once again, feel free. We can see that what? This report has analyzed a dentist financial performance in the areas of what profitability liquidity gearing and what investment ratios it can be concluded that with the exception of a superior return on capital employed Adenta performed poorly. I can use the word abysmally, so poorly when compared to the industry. So give the examiner a last punchline, right? So it is therefore recommended that the board don't forget to write into the board right that the board institutes or recommends to management because management is the one that run the um, business immediate corrective measures if a denta is to remain a going concern right you can just add do not hesitate to contact the undersigned if you have any questions regarding this report on Adenta. Then you say what? 
signed financial controller that's who you are right is it let me see yes financial controller you can say yours faithfully yours whatever you want to use but that is it right so here we've attempted um i know this has been my handwriting on its worst behavior but it's fine yeah um i've attempted so the conclusion i said what this report has analyzed a dentist's financial performance in the areas of what profitability liquidity gearing and investment ratios it can be concluded that with the exception of a superior roc a dental performed poorly when compared to other industry it is therefore recommended that the board institute or recommends to management immediate corrective measures if a dental is to remain a going concern and i said they should not hesitate to contact the undersigned that is me if they have any questions regarding this report on Adenta, then I signed and that was it. You can do this 10 marks, right? But the point I'm making is please be creative. The only things that are constant, let's go through, will be your heading. So right here, reports to the board of directors. You must state this. You must state who it is to, the question will tell you. You must state who it is from, the question will tell you in most cases. The date will be the date you're writing the exam. May I use today's date? Then the subject. You can see how we derive the subject right from the question. Then you give your introduction. So I said in this report, an analysis of the financial performance of Adent has been provided vis-a-vis -vis the performance of the telecom equipment industry. The report will be structured along the lines of profitability, liquidity, gear, and investment. Then I started. I gave profitability. I gave liquidity, I gave gearing, and then I gave what? Investment ratios. What I recommend, ladies and gentlemen, is please take past exam questions. When I gave conclusion, very important, introduction, body conclusion, right? If you don't conclude, you don't get the full mark. So please, what I want to mention here is that there is a structure, right? And ensure you stick to the structure if you stick to the structure you are guaranteed what some very good marks in this particular question so when it comes to this particular question what do i want you guys to know right i want all of us to pick the past five years or past five sentences actually five years if you can a lot right but you don't have time pick as many as you can and just focus on this question. See how it has been asked. You see a trend. You compute um, ratios, write reports. And the ratios, they can give you just one company and ask you to compute. They give you a list. Or they give you industry um, averages you compare. Or sometimes it's a company A and company B who are competitors. And they ask you to compute ratios for both of them. Right? Or they give you... Um, I've mentioned what? Yeah, the same company across two years. So... Take note, it can be one company across two years, compete for both years. It can be one company and its competitor compute for both of them, or they compute the industry average and give you to compute the same and write a report. Different scenarios, same requirements. Please know, pick the past five years and look at the requirements and see how the examiner had approached the, the question asking, how is the requirement worded or phrased? And also see how it was mentioned in the requirement. After you've done this, the next thing you want to do is to specifically memorize the ratios. Make a conscious attempt of knowing the formula for every ratio. Because you can see, out of the 20 marks, you will get some portion coming from you just applying your memorization skills. After you've memorized it, check to see how the examiner has computed it. Do they have any particular preferences? You realize that, like I told you, where you have two years worth of information, they expect you to use what? Averages. So ensure you use these averages and you see some other techniques from time to time. And then the report. Make a note of the format. How has the examiner consistently structured their report? Is it always title, to, from, date and subject with introduction, body, conclusion? Has he changed at any point in time? Has he modified his approach? 
you realize that there's some consistency and you can stick to this approach. So this is not difficult. Please, 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 please ensure that on this question on the ratios and interpretation, you score very high because this is your chance to do very well. It has nothing to do with double entry. It has nothing to do with IFRS. So if you just know the formula and you know how to write a good report, please, you will be fine. And for the report, do not be scared that what you are writing is not going to be correct. Just make sure it makes sense, right? And how would you do this? Make sure each ratio you memorize the formula, you understand what the ratio is trying to compute, you understand what the ratio is trying to say. So when it comes to you having to make a comment, you can easily, easily do that. So this is it. It's not difficult. So I'm at this point. Let's just um, seize here. And this being our last um, day, I really do hope that the crash course has been of immense benefit to you. If it has, please leave a comment down there. Let me know how this has helped you. So just type in the comments. Please, not the live chat. Let's do this in the comment section. So let's all move to the comment section. Just leave, um, let me know how it's benefited you. Let me know what you'd like to see in subsequent crash course sessions for future uh, people who sit the FR paper in future sittings. Let me just know um, how did you find this? Um, any general feedback um, on the crash course session? Um, yeah. If you want me to do another day for you, let me know. <laughs> I'll try to think about it. But this, this is it for seven days. So let's all go into the comments. Leave a word or two. Um, what you want this channel to do in future. If you have any suggestions around, let's say, different subject areas you want us to cover. We'll think about it if we have the capacity um, and all of that. So leave, leave some comments. Let us know how it's helped you, how it's benefited you. And please, when you do pass, I didn't say if. I use the word what when i didn't say if so when you do pass a financial reporting paper don't forget to let us know right find a way to let me know let me know that oh you eventually passed and i will celebrate with you so i wish you all a lot of success in your exam success will be yours for sure you can pass you will pass you must pass the exam it's within your ability remember once again the tips i've given you do not forget to answer all the five questions you've been asked. How would you do this? Allocate your time equally across board. So if it's a paper with five questions, which you will have, answer all. Make sure that if it's 20 marks for each, which would be most likely the case, you don't spend more than 36 minutes on each question. How did I arrive at 36 minutes? It is what I divided the three hours into minutes and converted that into marks. So every mark, I'll be spending 1.8 minutes trying to get it. So if it's a 36, um, it's a 20 mark question. I know it's 36 minutes. So like this particular question, out of the 20 marks, 36 minutes, 18 minutes for the calculation of the ratios, another 18 minutes for the report writing. And then I've also mentioned that make sure you know your standards. So please memorize your, I mean, learn the standards, learn the principles. It will help you in the published accounts question. It will help you in the two questions that come on ratios, I mean, on um, accounting standards specifically. And then consolidations. Please learn the technique I took you through. There's a standard way of presenting your workings. If it's a consolidated income statement, remember that you need to check, is it a mid-year acquisition so that you prorate the subsidiaries column. When it comes to published accounts, remember I told you, you don't need to balance the question. All you need to do is to ensure you've set up your workings correctly and then you are bringing in the worked figures into the statement as and when they are ready. So this has been it for seven days. I've taken you through different topics. If you found this helpful, obviously, I'll appreciate it if you like and um, smash the like button. If you want to, feel free to subscribe, even though it's not too much of a big deal. Um, I'll prefer you smash the like button as opposed to subscribing. Subscribe if you found this valuable. Subscribe if you want to be part of this community. If not, don't bother. Just hit like and move on with your life. So at this point, let's bring today's session to the end. Once again, I wish you guys a lot of success. I wish you all the um, success possible in your May 2021 financial reporting paper. I really hope that I hear good news uh, from all of us. And hopefully, maybe one of you becomes the prize winner for FR scoring the highest mark across the country. So on that note, it's MSL here, and it's been nice having you guys over seven days. All the best, 
and may we see you with success in your FR paper. Bye-bye for now.